In this episode of On the Run, balancing the life of a professional runner and accountant, the story of Alicia Williams. Plus, top Americans Meb Kofleski and Jason Hartman will be at the desk. Para-Olympian Tatiana McFadden will join us, and the fastest man of all time, Joffrey Mutai, and much more, all in this episode of On the Run at the ING New York City Marathon. Welcome to On the Run at the Timex Media Center at the 2013 ING New York City Marathon. I'm Carla Bruning along with my co-hosts Tim Hutchings and Carrie Tollefson and we are joined at the desk by senior writer at Sports Illustrated David Epstein. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We have an incredible professional field of athletes in this year's race. Tim, what are some of the highlights? Well, it's actually unprecedented. A really strong case can be made for perhaps for calling this the greatest ever uh, pair of fields in the men's and women's elite fields at the New York City Marathon. They have seven reigning champions, 17 Olympians, four Olympic medalists, four world championship individual medalists, and eight current and former world marathon majors race champions. And it's, it's not just that, it's about the chemistry, the makeup of the races. And I think we're expecting two fabulous races on Sunday. Well, let's get into the women's race. David, who are you looking at? I'm, I'm looking at Prisca Jeptu. You know, it's a marathon. Anything can happen. It's a great field, but I'm not prepared to bet against someone who just won London and then ran under 106 in the half marathon. So I think it's really her race to lose. We're seeing an athlete uh, in a prime that you see very, very rarely right now. But certainly Edna Kiplagat is going to be in the mix. Well, Edna is a twice world champion. You know, you cannot discount her. She has run under 220. She has a faster PR than Prisca Jeptu. But this is her third race in third marathon in six and a half months. That's a really small window to go to the well three times. And Prisca Jeptu has beaten her in the last two occasions they've met. And you can't forget about the Ethiopians. Deba and Dotto both have said they're in the best shape of their lives. They went one and two here in 2011. They're really excited to race against each other and the rest of the field. It's going to be crazy. That's why they run the race. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And well, Deba has the home court advantage. That's she right. lives and trains here, so yeah. you never know. She might use that to her advantage. But you recently wrote the book, The Sports Gene, and it's all about nature versus nurture and innate talent in athletics and how that affects outcomes. Did that affect why you picked Jep2? Well, I'm picking Jep2 because she's really fast, <laughs> but she's really fast like a lot of uh, Kenyan runners from the Kalenjin tribe. Okay, so this year, one through five in Berlin in the men, not just Kenyan, Kalenjin, one, two, and four in the women, one through four in the men in Chicago, one and two in the women, and Kalenjin runners are most likely going to win here too. This is from a source population the size of Costa Rica that happens to have their ancestry at very low latitude in a hot and dry climate, and that causes long limbs proportional to body length. That combined with the culture they have there, I think, is why we're seeing the greatest sort of talent hotbed in the history of professional sports. What's, what's kind of worrying, David, about what you're saying? It's sort of ominous, I guess, and it's should the rest of us just give up? You might just have to work harder on your environment than the mm -hmm. next person to get out there. So I hope that's the message that comes through. Well, it's a fascinating subject, and I <laughs> definitely want to read the book now. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us and for giving us your perspective on the sport. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Alicia Williams has been burning up the pavement as a professional runner, but she spends her days working as an accountant. Carrie, can you imagine training at that level and having a full-time job? You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you want to get in all the training that you want, but she also has a very, she's very passionate about her, her career. So, you know, I think that she can do it, but you have to be very, very organized and you have to run a really tight ship. Would you have been able to do that, Tim, when you were running? Absolutely not. No, I struggle <laughs> with a half a day's work. No, but I mean, if you look at Edna Kiplagat, you know, world champion, double world champion, five kids, an incredibly busy life. Wesley Correa, you know, he's a member of parliament in Kenya and he's, he's one of the fastest marathon runners ever. So it is possible. And, and I guess it's all about discipline and keeping your day sectioned up. You know, it's about a routine. Running, the best running comes from a great routine. Yeah. Well, let's see how she does it. Here's Alicia Williams. With running, you have to have a lot of discipline and you have to have a lot of passion and, and drive. And I think that also carries over to my work life. I suppose the big thing is probably the fact that I um, 
have a career outside of running. I'm a CPA. I work as a senior financial reporting analyst. I've got really hard workout days at three and a half hours in the morning. There are definitely days that I think to myself that I can't do this. This is Alicia. Those days make good days that much better. When we find out that she was an Olympic hopeful, it's pretty exciting for us. We did have a health challenge. She blew everybody out of the water. How many yeah. uh, miles are you running in a day now? 15. I don't think I drive that far in a day. <laughs> <laughs> it is a balancing act and, and trying to get everything to kind of flow together is sometimes challenging. And that's where Scott comes in. How'd you feel? Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. The thing that I love about him with running, it's always we. I live vicariously <laughs> through her. He's been there for both of my marathons, and hugging him at the end is a memory that I'll always treasure. Maddie Sewer is also running the New York City Marathon. We've been doing all of our training together. It really helps to have your teammate out there just because you run with them every day, and so it's kind of comforting. They're genuinely happy to see each other run well, which is kind of rare at like that elite level. Very limited free time in general. Most of my vacation days are spent on races. Relationships with friends and family are really important to me and, and I think that's that's maybe one of the hardest things about being so busy. Mostly that's what we do in our free time. We just try to hang out with loved ones and relax and have a good time. We're gonna make quinoa sweet potato hash. Good recovery food. Like when she was in college, she, was, she ran, she worked, she was in student government. She just likes to be doing a bunch of things at, at one time. So for her, it just works. At the Olympic trials, I was so excited that I was running with Shalane Flanagan and Amy Hastings. And I just have to remember not to be intimidated and just believe in myself and believe in my team. When I'm running, I don't have a lot of fear. It's a dream of mine to run the New York City Marathon. It doesn't get any bigger than this. With us now is American Alicia Williams. Alicia, in watching the footage of you, I was just struck by the fact that you're sitting at a desk all day <laughs> and then running these times. I mean, the two don't necessarily mesh together well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, I, I enjoy having a career and obviously love running. So, you know, for me, it seems to work out pretty well. But, um, you know, I know it's not the traditional route to go. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I feel pretty fortunate that I am where I am in my accounting career and in my running career. And, um, you know, I, I guess I just feel pretty lucky overall. Do, do, you, do you not feel as though you may look back in 10 or 15 years time and regret not having given 100% to your running because I'd love to be 31 again and have that, <laughs> that window. You've got a six or seven year window probably in which to really fulfill your potential. Yeah. And, 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 and I think most coaches would say now, whatever you say, you're compromising your performances by working all day. Yeah, I mean, that thought has definitely crossed my mind. Um, I would say that I haven't really felt like I was at a level to where I could really justify working full time. I mean, now I think, you know, I have the World A standard on the track, which has always been a huge goal of mine. And, and to me, that was kind of always, a, um, you know, that for me, that was when I would think, wow, I've, I've really, you Got know, improved there. as a runner. And yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm there, you know, and, and so, but, you know, I, I did that and, and I'm still working. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't really, for me, the, the real indication that, um, I should just start running because I, I feel pretty fortunate that I was able to run 15.09 and work full time and I don't know that I would have run faster if I wasn't working full time. It's hard well, to balance, say. Balance is a big thing in life and if you're it happy, is. you're going to run faster. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yep. And you know, I, I feel really happy. I mean, I'm Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm lucky to be where I am. And I don't, don't know if your guys at work are watching, but I mean, part-time, you know, maybe 20 hours a week, not 40 <laughs> hours a week. She does it all. You, 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 you've run a 234 marathon. You've run yeah. 234. You know, Sunday, two, sub-230 beckons. Then you're talking real world class. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess if I run sub-230, I'll have you talk to my <laughs> boss. And talk, talk about that. You're here in New York for your first time. How yes. excited are you to line up? I'm so excited. I mean... You know, we have goals. Everybody has goals and mm -hmm. things that they'd be happy. But, you know, I'm just thrilled to be out there. And the energy, that's why I love the marathon. Yeah. I mean, you're out there with, you know, 45,000 people, and everyone's just out there doing their best. And it's so inspiring. And, you know, I'm just thrilled to be here. 
You know, you get to go through a 26.2 mile trek through one of the greatest cities in the world. And they shut it down. You know? for you yeah, guys. exactly. Yeah. How awesome is that? Well, best of luck to you. Have a Thank great you. race. Thank yeah, you. Good Thanks. luck. Appreciate it. Alicia Williams is certainly an inspiration for all of us 9 to 5 runners out there. Stay tuned. After the break, we'll hear from the fastest man in the world, Joffrey Mutai, and the indomitable Meb Kofletsky. Run with the team instead of a gang. Run so fast food can't catch you. Run to accelerate in the classroom. Run to turn dead ends into open roads. Run to be a success story. Not a statistic. New York Roadrunners free running programs move kids forward and help foster healthy communities. To donate or learn more, visit nyrr.org or call toll-free 855-NYRR-RUN. Twenty-six point two miles make it a race. You make it the marathon. You can watch it live, the ING New York City Marathon, Sunday, November 3rd at 9 a.m. on ABC7. The 2013 ING New York City Marathon professional athlete field is stacked with champions, but two of them have a special place in the race's history. In 2011, Jeffrey Mutai put any doubts about his marathon speed to rest when he won the ING New York City Marathon and shattered the course record by more than two and a half minutes. The questions had arisen after the 2011 Boston Marathon, in which Mutai outsprinted Moses Mosop on Boylston Street for the win. Mutai's time turned the marathoning world on its head. His almost unbelievable two hours, three minutes and two seconds was nearly a full minute faster than Haile Gabriel Selassie's then world record of two hours, 3.59, set on the ultra-fast Berlin course. Although Boston's course is famously hilly, it's also point to point, which makes tailwinds possible and disqualifies the race for record purposes. After New York and then his win at the 2012 BMW Berlin Marathon, Mutai has a genuine claim to being the best marathoner on the planet. Meb Kofledsky was the 2004 Athens Olympic Marathon silver medalist, and he finished fourth in the 2012 London Olympic Marathon. In 2009, he became the first American since Alberto Salazar in 1982 to win the ING New York City Marathon, a race in which he's finished in the top 10 six times. One of the most consistent runners in American history, he is the only man to ever win both a medal in an Olympic marathon and win the ING New York City Marathon in the same year. One of the most consistent runners in American history, Meb Kofleski is still at the top of his game at age 38. These two champions will toe the line on Sunday, hoping to repeat history. With us are two ING New York City Marathon champions, America's Meb Kofleski and Kenya's Joffrey Mutai. Thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. So Meb, I'm going to start with you. You know this course. You've run New York seven times. You won it in 2009, but you've had a rough patch lately. You had a fall two weeks ago. How are you feeling? Well, I feel very excited to be here, and it's always a great honor to be here for New York and racing in front of a great crowd. And, uh, yeah, it's a, pat a rough patch for me training for this year. But, you know, things happen, and I uh, just got to move up. And uh, it's not how many times you fall, but how many times you get up. Now, Joffrey, you are the reigning champion here. You're the course record holder here. You've run the fastest marathon in the world. What is going to be your approach coming into Sunday? There's a tough field out there. Yeah. First of all, I thank God because um, I'm back again. Everyone I know uh, prepare himself well. And for me, I prepare myself again, my path well. But when we come to the day of the Sunday, uh, I cannot say or talk much more than Sunday because talking is different than action. Mm -hmm. Joffrey, your friend and, you know, countryman just set the world record and you train with him. How excited are you for him? But, you know, what does that mean for you now in the future? First of all, I was so happy. I was so proud. I was sweat all over. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing like it's me. Yeah. Oh, and I was very happy to see my colleague doing that, breaking the world record. Does it motivate you? It was motivated me a lot. Yeah. As both of you are, are champions of the same race, you've both won New York. Do you have, you know, sort of amongst winners, there's a respect for each other? Like, you know, we both know this course. We both won this course here. All the days are different. So 
what I'm actually saying is the day will come that day and the only thing is I pray God the body will uh, to be okay. And Meb, what does it mean to you? Well, it's when you win a uh, marathon, you have a mutual respect because it's not something that is given, it's what is earned. You have an idea of what you're going to do that day, but like what Jeffrey is saying, it's like that given day, everybody trains, everybody works hard. Whose day is going to be? You know, is it going to be one of us or is it going to be somebody new or, or Martin Leo who has won it before? And that's what racing is. Well, I think it's safe to say that we are all fans of the sport and we are all fans <laughs> of both of you. Yeah. And we're excited to see what you can do out there. Good Thank luck. You. Good Thank luck, you, you so guys. Much. Thank you. Joining us now is American Tatiana McFadden, a Paralympian and the reigning London, Boston, and Chicago Marathon champions in the wheelchair division. Thank you so much for joining us, Tatiana. Thank you. Now, if you win in New York this weekend, which you won back in 2010, you'll be taking home what they're calling the Grand Slam of wheelchair racing. Correct. Um, I would have won the, the four major series of Boston, London, Chicago, and now New York. So I'm you know, it's going to be a really tough weekend. Um, it's going to be tough competition. It's going to be fast, and it's going to be another sprint finish. Who do well, you think is your main competition this weekend? Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you must be, I mean, so confident, though. You've got that winning habit. You, you got six gold medals at the IPC World Championships back in the summer in France from one distance is 100 up to 5,000. You're unbeaten in every single event you've competed in this year. Uh, realistically... Who is a threat on Sunday? Come on. <laughs> Realistically, um, I mean, Amanda Mergori, she's won this um, in 2011. And so uh, she she's going to be a very tough competitor. Manuela, who finished second right behind me in Chicago, another very tough competitor. Now, in 2010, you won with a really bold move right out of the gates. I did. Last year, you came in third. I did, yes. What is going to be your strategy for this year? Is it top secret? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the strategy is going to be uh, just to, to use my own strengths and weaknesses. I mean, I'm a climber. Downhills, I'm a grandma. So I really need to hit those hills hard. So you know what? You were talking beforehand when we were chatting that you have some other big stuff happening after this marathon. I am going to be trying out for the cross-country skiing team for the Sochi Games. Um, it's it's definitely a huge transition. I'm I'm... Right now, it's going from hot to cold and looking at the snow most of the time and yeah. trying to look at the technique, um, but it's been really quite an exciting journey. Just one thing in between New York and Sochi, and that is, of course, your graduation in December. Oh, You've got to yes. nail that. Yeah. You've got to get I that right. I have to, yeah. Now, your mum, who's your manager, and we can use this word you brought to us this morning, of momager, yeah. uh, She's saying you've got to get that right. She's been such a huge support. I mean, I've just had such an incredible year, and mm -hmm. it's really just about pushing my body and what I can do, and it's just more about being an athlete as well. I mean, I really enjoy being a student and getting a college degree. Wow. Well, good luck on Thank Sunday. You. I Thank think you everyone's right. going to be rooting for you to get that big win. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Go Thank get you them. so much. Thank you for having me. Tatiana is truly an incredible athlete with an amazing story. So be sure to tune in on Sunday to ESPN2 Nationally or ABC7 in New York for an in-depth look at her story and to watch her race. Now, Tatiana is not the only athlete who's getting ready to race this weekend. There are thousands of other runners who are making their way to the 2013 ING New York City Marathon Health and Fitness Expo to pick up their bibs, race packets, and any other last-minute necessities. In the world of competitive eating, Yasser Salem is ranked number 19th in the world. Yasser, we caught up with you at the Brooklyn Half back in May. What have you been up to since then? Uh, I did an eighth in July, where I came in eighth, so I was pretty happy about that. It was a pretty big jump from last year. Um, and then after that, I did an Ironman and three half Ironman, and I'm now the cannoli eating champion of the world. So since your competitive eating season is over and your running season, which is crazy, three half Ironmans and one Ironman, oh my gosh, and now you're finishing it up with the ING New York City Marathon. What does this race mean to you? 
there, there's no other marathon that I've been to of the three different marathons I, I, I've done that compares with like the energy and just the experience that you get here. So Yasser, how do you mesh the world of running and competitive eating? Is it hard to down 30 plus cannolis and then a couple weekends later run a marathon? Absolutely not. Actually, there is a lot of overlap in the type of the type of uh, thinking and the conditioning that you do for competitive eating and for running, and definitely the theory of like building up and conditioning your body and your mind over time uh, is exactly the same for both uh, competitive eating and for for running or even triathlon. Um, so I've taken a lot of that thinking from running and applied it to competitive eating. And there's generally not a time where I'm doing both things in the same weekend or even in the same day, uh, but it has happened um, and I've been able to adapt to it. But generally I have a week to kind of like recover from one or the other and it works out just fine. All right, and I have to ask you, post-race meal after the marathon. I live in the East Village and one of my favorite restaurants is this Ethiopian restaurant and I go to it without fail every year. You're gonna eat a lot of food? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> double. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a great race out there. We can't wait to see you. I hope you have a great one. Thank you. It was great to catch up with Yasser and catch all the excitement of the expo. Coming up next, we'll talk to one of America's most consistent marathoners, Jason Hartman, after the break. Twenty six point two miles make it a race. You make it the marathon. You can watch it live, the ING New York City Marathon, Sunday, November 3rd at 9 a.m. on ESPN2. Today's cold hard moment is brought to you by Coors Light. Today's Coors cold hard moment of the day is Tatiana McFadden's arrival to New York City and her attempt to win the unprecedented Grand Slam sweep of the London, Boston, Chicago, and New York marathons in a single year. And that's today's Coors cold hard moment of the day. Jason Hartman has proved to be one of America's most consistent marathoners, and amazingly, he runs unsponsored. He's really sort of a journeyman in the sport, in a sense. Yeah, he is, but you know, he's, he's, he's sort of the blue-collar guy of, of the marathon world, and, then, and at the age of 32, I still feel as though Jason's banging on the door of world class and could yet make it, you know, and if he, if he gets that breakthrough, and it could happen here in New York, then yeah, the guy's got several more years of good running in him. It's, you know, he's one of those guys you really want it to happen yeah. for him. Yeah, I love this guy. I mean, he is genuinely happy when he does well. He's excited about it. But yet at the same time, he has the reality that this could be my last race. So for he him to come here and to run the ING New York City Marathon, there's a lot on the line for him. But he still keeps it real. You know, it's just, it's another race for him. It is a career for him. But yet he has other stuff outside the sport, which is really nice. So here's the story of America's Jason Hartman. What makes me tick is trying to do the unthinkable. Even the performance doesn't equal the feeling of you crossing the finish line and you shocking people. I was fourth twice at Boston. You know, I've been lucky enough to have success there two years in a row. If I were to retire tomorrow, I would be extremely proud of myself. If you don't have something inside you that motivates you, you're probably in the wrong sport. Also, the struggles that I've gone through, a lot of people don't know those struggles, but the people close to me do. I represent them through my running. Currently, I'm unsponsored. A lot of people probably wonder if it bothers me or not. I like to think of it as a motivator. I like to just come out here and start thinking about the race. Think about you know, who I'm competing against and how ready I'm gonna have to be. Today we're going to a high school invitational for an athlete that I coach. She's the second rated high school runner in the nation. On your mark. The purity of high school running is a lot different than the purity of professional running. Doing great, nice and controlled. I hope my legacy down the lines is I was a great athlete, but I also gave back to the sport. He just helps me stay relaxed and enjoy it. And when he has confidence in me, I race my best. How fast were you the first mile? Yeah, I knew we were, uh, I knew you were fast. She was the first place. Great day for her. 
My expectations for New York City are just really trying to lay it out on the line. The thing with the marathon is anything can happen. New York, it's an equalizer course. It's a hard course too, so personally I have to capitalize on other people's mistakes. If I prepare myself as best I can, I can't have any regrets. It goes back to what makes me tick. It's making people realize how worthy you are. I am an unsponsored person, but my name is very important to me. I run for that. With us now is Jason Hartman and Weldon Johnson of Let'sRun.com. Jason, one of the things that struck me in watching your piece is you're running so consistently, and you're coaching too. How does coaching the next generation of runners influence your own training and your own running? You know, there's, there's a sense of confidence that you gain from also making someone accomplish the goals that they want. So. Jason, you're such a class act. I mean, we watched the piece on you, and you're, I mean, I know you personally, you're just such a nice guy, but, you know, when it comes down to running races, fourth at the past two Bostons, you know what you're doing out there, and, you know, you come across as a quiet guy, but you are quietly confident during the whole entire race. How do you get there? Well, it's just um, a lot of experience, and, um, you know, a lot of people can just look at you and, and judge you just by the way you look, mm -hmm. but most people can't look inside you, and so... That's that's the thing that you know you either have it or you don't, and I like to think I have it. So, you have you got it for Sunday's race? I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at your card, and I know Weldon will have an opinion on this, but 61.51 here in the New York City half, which is not necessarily that fast, of course. Yeah, I mean, in a, in a race like New York, anything can happen. It's not a rabbited race. I don't really necessarily worry about time. It'll just take care of itself. <laughs> okay, so so would you prefer to be fourth on Sunday in? 2.13 or 10th in 2.9? I'd rather be 4th uh, in 2.20. <laughs> <laughs> well, Weldon, you're so connected to the fans of the sport at Let's Run.com. They're very vocal. What does it mean to them to have an American runner like Jason to root for and follow? I think Jason's the type of guy they all can relate to. The unsponsored guy who breaks through. I mean, Jason had a sponsorship and now is unsponsored, but they still, that's the guy they can relate to more than the Ryan Hall's and the Mebs, I think. So I think Jason gives everybody hope. And while you're here, I'd love to get your perspective on the field as well. I mean, it's a great field. Uh, for Jason, I'm kind of wondering, you know, how do you go about managing the field? Because it could be so hot up fast, up front. You know, do, do you hold back or wh what do you do? But, you know, Jeffrey Mutai, everybody thinks he's the guy to beat. But, you know, what's he done in the last year? Everyone just assumes that that's going to be there. But if it's not, Steven Kipritic has surprised everybody, and then Kabetti's going for the half million. I mean, then there's a ton of other guys. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Jason, you're famous for running your own race. Is that what you're going to do on Sunday? Yeah, and assess situations as they come. Um, you know, I can't worry about what anybody else is doing. I, I have to control what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, to be quite honest, when I run that way, I sleep a lot better. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll get lots of good rest tonight. Well, thank you. Good luck in the race on Sunday. There will be a lot of people good out luck. there cheering thank for you. you. Thank you. Experience the excitement of race day no matter where you are. Saturday, November 2nd, the Marathon Eve Experience will air live on ABC7 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern from the Marathon finish line. Eyewitness News anchors Liz Cho and David Navarro give viewers a primer on what they can expect during the running of the 43rd ING New York City Marathon. Sunday, November the 3rd, race day. Live race coverage in the New York City metro area will be on ABC 7 from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern and nationwide on ESPN2 from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Viewers can see race highlights too from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and on their local ABC affiliate. International viewers can watch the broadcast via a live digital stream on 7online.com from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern. No matter where your fans are on race day, they can follow your journey via the web, text, and our mobile app. Track my runners on the web. On race day, spectators will be able to track up to 10 runners at a time. No pre-registration is required and the service is free. Sign up on race day at trackmyrunners.nyrr.org. Follow our official Twitter and Instagram feeds on race week, race day, and beyond. Remember, you make it the marathon. So join the conversation using hashtag INGNYCM. A special on the run at the dash to the finish line 5K will go live on Saturday at 5 p.m. 
and the recap of the 2013 ING New York City Marathon will go live on Monday at 4 p.m. So stay tuned. Thank you for joining us. It's been an amazing few days here at the Timex Media Center. We've heard from Olympians, world champions, charity runners, and lots of other inspirational folks too. What are your final thoughts going into the races this weekend? Boy, I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm getting impatient. I just want it to happen now. You know, we've been here in the Timex Media Center all week, meeting stars, legends, uh, current athletes. Uh, it's been hell working with you two gorgeous <laughs> ladies as well, of course, for me. But as a fan of the sport, I just feel like I'm a kid in a sweet shop, and I want to I want to get at the sweets on Sunday. Yeah, you know what? That 5K is going to be really exciting and so much fun to kick off our weekend. We have 11 Olympians running here on Saturday morning, so I'm really excited to, to see that. But also to see the actual race on Sunday. That's going to be pretty cool, I think, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, next up is the 5K, so be sure to tune in to a special edition of On the Run at the Dash to the Finish Line 5K tomorrow at 5 p.m. And I want to give a special thanks to all of the volunteers and New York Roadrunner staff who make Race Week possible. From the Timex Media Center at the 2013 ING New York City Marathon, I'm Carla Bruning with Tim Hutchings and Carrie Tollefson, and we are On the Run.